I haven't really got anything prepared to say. I just wanted to talk about it. You enough in frame. Yeah, with the creepy. We've got Mm. weird photos behind us. Weird pictures. We should block. We should move our heads slightly to the (laughs) side. Although that still leaves that one. I'm gonna do it like this. Anyway. Hello everybody! Hello! My name is Darren. I'm Graham. And we are going to talk about the film Iron Man 2. Do you remember the plot in any way whatsoever? It's been a while since you watched it. I remember there's a load of kind of replicants of Iron Man. Replicants? Were you going to say reprobates? I was going to say replibots. Replibots! But that doesn't make sense. Um, There's a load of, yeah, these kind of fake Iron Man, these knockoff Argos versions of Iron Man. Uh, but they're somehow better than him. No, that's Are they not. Right they've got like lasers and stuff. Yeah, and then they fight with Don Cheadle. <laughs> Sorry, against Don Cheadle with Iron Man. It's a bit like hearing a I've plot a... recited by a drunk. Yeah, there are a load of replicants that are better than Iron Man that fight with Don Cheadle. That's <laughs> Iron Man too. <laughs> and then uh, Should yeah, I yeah. tell you what happened? That's it. Oh, well, you're not a million on, miles off. But I mean, you forgot R- Mickey Rourke for a start. Ricky, yeah, yeah, Ricky, yeah. Ricky Moore, Ricky Moore. Um, yeah, so basically it's just the follow-up Iron, from Iron Man 2. So he's announced to the world that he is who he is. And uh, Mickey Rourke has rev- wants revenge against him for something which you'll, you find out about. And there's a rival to Stark Industries who's trying to make the Iron Man technology. And they recruit Mickey Rourke's help. So, you know, chaos ensues. Is this the same company that follows into Iron Man 3? Not to... No. Is the not? company in Iron Man 3 is owned by uh, Guy Pearce's oh, yeah, character, yeah. isn't it? Whereas the one in... Iron Man 2 is um, uh, Sam Rockwell's. Right, right. Is it, what, what, what? That's that's an interesting thing, I think, isn't it? Of yeah. all the sort of things in the Marvel Cinematic Universe, we seem to have forgot Sam Rockwell's part of it. That's weird. He's amazing. I, I love don't, Sam Rockwell. I don't even remember him being in it at all. Well, that's the thing. I hadn't seen the film since it came out at the cinema, which was 2010, and so as of today, four <laughs> years ago. And Today. Yes, as of today. As of today, right now. <laughs> uh, I remember it being a bit shit. And I've always thought I think of everybody it, does. Yeah, well, I, I kind of think of it as the one kind of chink in Marvel Cinematic Universe's almost flawless armour. <laughs> Suit of armour, yeah. yeah. Mm-hmm. I mean, you know, not every one of their films yeah. is perfect. Like, the, who the hell was the bad guy in Guardians of the Galaxy? I don't remember. But yeah, um, it's like a blue face, I think. Exactly, that's it. That's what his character was, wasn't he? He We've was already the man mentioned with the blue that. face. We've already mentioned this in the Guardians of the Galaxy video, however. Check it out. Um, my, my point is that, you know... It's like, all the films are good. I'm not saying they're perfect, but everyone kind of remembers Iron Man 2 as being a bit bad. Yeah, Captain America's like considered boring as well. Like, they're the two weak points of the franchise, aren't they? Uh, the, yeah. the, the, the series. Yeah, I suppose, but... um, By general consensus, I imagine. I think I, I think Captain America 2 is just a bit sort of Indiana Jones light. But, um, I meant the first one. Yeah, I did as well. You said two? Did I? Yeah. I didn't mean to. You don't mean the Winter Soldier? No. Okay. Um, anyway, so I watched Iron Man 2 again the other day for the first time since I saw it then. And you know what? I thought it was bloody brilliant. Bloody brilliant. Bloody brilliant. Oh, what a sterling review. I really liked it. I went in with... I think that possibly helps, is that the first Iron Man's really good. So when we saw the second one at the pictures, we had high expectations because it was a sequel to that really good film. Whereas when I went into it this time, I had low expectations because I was just sort of watching that slightly probably crap film from... Because you're going through a little little period of watching all the Marvel films. I'm going through the 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 Marvel from the beginning. But... um, but yeah, I thought it was brilliant, and I don't remember why I didn't think it was good. And I think, sort of looking back, if you look at the kind of biggest criticism of it, is that it's sort of like a setup to the Avengers, you know, so it focuses more on setting up a sequel film than it does being a film on its own. Right. But I don't think that's true. You know, th- there's things that make you think it's doing that by like a random scene with Nick Fury and mm. the sort of shoehorning in of, um, what's her name, uh, Black Widow, Widow, and things like that. But if you look, if you go through them, that's the first time we'd really seen lots of characters from different films suddenly appear in it. Because oh, yeah, the right. ones before was Iron Man, where it was just Iron Man except Nick Fury at the end of the credits. The Incredible Hulk, except a quick cameo from Tony Stark at the end. And then this one. But now, since then, they're all fucking cropping up in each other's films. You've got Captain America in Thor 2, and you've got... Uh, who else? You've got Black Widow in, in uh, Captain America 2, haven't you? Quite yeah. a lot of it. And uh, Mark Ruffalo, what's his name, Bruce Banner at the end of Iron Man 3. So it's like... Which, and Nick Fury just crops up in them all. Mm. So we're kind of more used now to seeing characters all cropping up. So it doesn't. So going back to watch Iron Man 2, it doesn't seem like so much it's just setting up the sequel films as it does just doing what being they do. Being a part of that world. Just being a part of that world. And which, is, which is, which is, which, if I remember right, it was the main problem with, with other films. It's like, well, why doesn't somebody help out here? Because yeah. Captain America 
to specifically because he's yeah. in real trouble and even Nick Fury getting attacked and stuff like that. Yeah. It's like, well, well, where's I mean, the Hulk could West. sort this out in no time. You well, know, Iron Man. Yeah. Anyone? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so, so I guess Iron Man two kind of picks up there because it yeah. is part of that world. I mean, it, it, stays it, it is kind of setting it up. You know, the Avengers, mm -hmm. but not to the point where I didn't enjoy it. You know, like not where I was like, oh crud, it's like a trailer. It's like like a you half know, of, two halves of two films. Yeah. And yeah. even yeah. if you, even if that did really, really, really wind you up. There's loads of brilliant things in there that I don't see how people can't enjoy, like the bit where Mickey Rourke shows up, you know, at that racetrack and starts cutting mm. cars in half and stuff. That's really fun. I mean, I've watched racing. It's fucking boring. I watched <laughs> I watched racing once, F1 once, and nothing happened. Literally, it was just raining for three hours. I just sat, sat there watching people go, it's still raining, we can't do anything. <laughs> if I watched that and suddenly some psycho turned up with, like, lightsaber whips and started cutting cars and all. <laughs> I'd be well into that. <laughs> but, um, meanwhile, John Favreau, like, runs him over with, a, like, a limo or something yeah yeah did so you like his um his carry suit is uh yeah obviously the carry suits are made the, the suit in a briefcase yeah yeah yeah, yeah. um and don cheadle is in it for the first time replacing mm -hmm. terence howard and he's well better than terence howard well generally anyway yeah well i mean i don't really know terence howard's work that much i know he was in that film hustle and flow where he sang it's hard out there for a pimp and he went to think oh it is <laughs> yeah, what well. everyone does think is well, fucking good <laughs> yeah yeah yeah, yeah. You know, I, I imagine a charity case. Like, can we make it easier for pimps? <laughs> yeah, but, to uh, dominate women. Yeah, I mean, off. you know, sometimes the prostitutes <laughs> don't like having their face cut. Yeah. But um, sometimes. sometimes, you know, it's hard out there for a pimp. Um, <laughs> so I think Don Cheadle's better. And it's just, I don't know, I just like the direction they went. You know, like this Tony Stark start, starts kind of delving into his alcoholism. Mm -hmm. um, and Well, yeah, that's that's a massive scene, isn't it? Uh, you know, where... The first half of the film. I, I mean, know. admittedly, it kind of gets resolved when Nick Fury shows up and goes, yeah. here's the solution. <laughs> but it's still fun. And yeah. I don't know. I, I just really liked it. Good. Yeah. I'm glad. Yeah. But it was just a surprise to me because I remember not liking it. So, so I mean, obviously, it didn't hold that much weight in your mind before the second viewing. Mm. So what didn't live up to expectations? I'm not, not what, to this make, time. Yeah. So looking back on it, what are the weak points? Even though well, you no, the weak points, I mean, the they're, bar. they're not wrong about saying that it is. It does focus a bit too much on setting up the sequel. Yeah, and it is kind of all over the place in that half the time it's people yammering and that kind of witty stuff, and then they go, "Oh yeah, we could have some robots explode." <laughs> yeah. But although it might not tie together that well, it's still individually brilliant. You know, like I, like the fighting, the robots fighting is more interesting here than it is in um, Transformers. And although the robots fighting um, might not be... Oh, come on. At least... The thing... The difference is... If you watch a war film... Like Fury... Yeah. Yeah. And you've... And, and then something like... Um, something else. Something about Ryan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm just thinking like... In Fury, for instance, you've got like a load of unique characters that you know. Yeah. Which is what, where you've got... Where you've got um, Transformers. But then you've got something like this where all those little... The robots... They're just kind of faceless, senseless, any any run of the mill kind of. They're just like so you're background saying that the deaths, you know. Fighting in Iron There's Man no is more interesting because we're relating to. We have an, a relationship with the characters. In in Transformers. No, in Iron Man. No, I'm saying in uh, Transformers is more interesting. Are you kidding me? No, the ro you're talking about the robots fighting. The robots fighting in Transformers well, would robots, be more interesting. Like, Iron Man in that as a robot. Well, obviously he's more exciting and he kind of excels it past the Transformers franchise by you a think long that the mile. Characters in Transformers are more no, I'm, relatable. I'm, or, no, no, no. I'm saying you you know their personalities. And well, no, not... they have no personalities. Mm. What personalities have they got? <laughs> Tell me Bumblebee's personality. He can't talk. That's a personality, is but it? But he's protective as what, well. What a great trait a, that is. Look, the point is, I'm saying, the uh, one of the main criticisms I remember of the of of uh, Iron Man Two was the fact that all these random robots turn up. No, I agree with no that personality, the, yeah, and the, they are just no, those do. But they're still the you've still got storm, they're just stormtroopers, you know, they're faceless. Yeah, but you've still got anybody's three main ones. I agree. Mickey, Rob, I Don agree. Cheatland, and Iron that's, Man. that's the only reason why you go to see it. So to have the largest set piece. Uh, the largest scene, the, the largest action scene in the film, yeah, starring a load of nobodies. But it doesn't star a load of nobodies. It stars Don Cheadle, Mickey Rourke. Three. Well, the, one of those has more personality <laughs> than every character in Transformers, including human characters. I agree. I'm just saying, people, uh, you can see why people might take a distaste to it when there is nobody who's very interesting, apart from those three people. But there's, those three people are more interesting. Those than three anything. people You're saying Transformers just... is better. No, I'm not. I'm you just did? saying. I'm just saying it's easier to see why people might dislike. Uh, 
uh, Iron Man 2. Why? Because... <laughs> why is... But there's no characters in Transformers that have any personality, so why is that better? No, there are. No, there are not. characters because you, you like... You know, like Ratchet and all that. Ratchet, yeah. I don't even know who Ratchet is. Well, he dies in the first one, but... Oh, that one. I isn't that Jazz that dies? It's all the same to me. Exactly. They're all the same. <laughs> I get, no, they no, have no personality. The point, the, but there's fewer, I guess, and that's the point. And, and the there's fact more? that... And you're invested in them because you don't want them to die. They're a team. I do want them to die. I don't care if they live or die. They're nothing. They're just CG bits of shit. I think so, that and, and Roger so, Ebert said so he had... excuse. So what are... Excuse me. So yeah. what are... If they are CG pieces of... Shit. Yeah. So yeah. what what does that make the, the enemies of Iron Man in Iron Man 2? Those, those CG blocks... A threat to the three characters that, or the two characters that we can relate to. They're a threat we to... We love Optimus Prime. We love I Bumblebee. I don't love Optimus Prime. And who? <gasps> Bumblebee. I don't we, we care. Just about Bumblebee. I couldn't care about them. They're nothing. They're just things. They're not characters. They're just So are those effects. other things in the thing? But they provide a threat to the people that we do like. Is there any under? Is there any undercurrent uh, uh, point behind those, you know, those copy and paste replicants? Copy and paste? Well, I, I, what do you mean copy and paste? For a start, they look practical. So that's interesting. That's more interesting than Transformers for a start. I'm not they saying they practical can fly. cogs and whirring things behind their eyes. Yes, yeah, CG cogs, and there's well, nothing yeah. behind the eyes. <laughs> um, but I'm not talking about Michael Bay here. I thought I, I was watching Iron Man too, and I thought it's kind of got a kind of Paul Verhoeven RoboCop kind of thing going on here, like that you know with the sort of cool robots and stuff like that. It's not just what's the coolest thing we can make with CG. It feels real and uh, stylized. I liked it as opposed to why and Transformers. And they would just die, yeah, but they drop on like flies and stuff like no, that. They kill not. them in multiple ones at a time and stuff like that. That shows how dispensable they are. But there's still there's still a human at the centre of it. Yeah, absolutely. So I'm not saying that I thought that Iron Man 2 was amazing because those baddies at the end were so emotive. But what I'm saying is that the ro the fighting of robots is more interesting. I mean, firstly, because they've got characters at the centre of it that I can... We like Shia LaBeouf as well. In no, terms... I don't like Shia That's LaBeouf. That's different to, you, to, to the film not liking him. No, it's not. It, it, what? What? <laughs> the point is, the film is set up that we care about Shia LaBeouf. And it Let's fails. not talk about... Okay, right. But it, in Iron Man, I do care about Tony Stark and uh, yeah, Rhodes. Yeah, of course you do. Well, what's your point? I'm saying the film is set up to make you like... The point of wow, the film is to like... Yeah, I know. I'm saying the point of the... I know, we're really hung up on this one point. You are. Forget it then. <laughs> well, no, make it, we spent this long trying to make it. Finish your point. What's your point? I've made the point. And what is your point? The both all right. Well, it's funny that you care more about the enemies than I Iron do. I don't care about the enemies. I mean, I think that aesthetically they're more interesting than anything in Transformers. I just said that the the robot fighting is better than in Transformers. Oh well, yeah. The fight, the fighting, yeah. Yeah, yeah, I agree with that. That was the original point I made. I probably wasn't listening. No. Well, thank God we dwelled on it. I think I undermined my important point there by saying that I wasn't listening because I, I was really, but and I, I just thought, I just don't think you really answered it. But let's just well, what's move your on. question? Let's Summarize just, your question. Let's just move on, shall we? Well, there's not much left to say. Seems it's already gone to thirteen minutes. Uh, so what what is your main point with that? Like, if we're going to spend this much time on did it, did you like Butterbean or Butterball or whatever his name was? He was in the boxing ring. One, he was dead big. Happy Hogan. Is that his name? Yeah, John Favreau. <laughs> no, wasn't there that that. What, what am I thinking of? I have no idea. My point about the robots thing. Was... <laughs> you can't say, did you like Butterbean? Not know what that <laughs> means. And then just go back to a previous point. What the fuck is Butterbean? <laughs> the big, the big fat guy. The big John obese Favreau. thing. No, not John Favreau. Are you thinking of the blob from the Wolverine movie? The Wolverine Origins? Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I haven't seen Where it. Where the hell did you get Butterbean I from? I haven't seen it for a while. And Butterbean <laughs> is the... What's his name? I have no idea. No, Butterbean's in an episode of Jackass. Right. I got them all confused. Sorry. Well, I am a film fan. Uh, that was just a, yes, a lapse you in. You just don't remember what's That's what. It's just a lapse in. It's really hot in here. Anyway, so come on. Is that the end of this? Because we've spent so long. You're embarrassing. Um, I'm embarrassing you by letting you talk. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you were doing all right for the first 10 minutes. I know. Uh, any other points to make about Iron Man 2? Do you think it flows well into the next film that came along or does it flow better into Iron Man 3? Well, that's the thing that I think are really good about these films is that you can kind of watch Iron Man 2 without having watched Iron Man 1. Mm. And the same with Iron Man 3. I mean, it, it obviously helps. Right. As opposed to, you know, I don't know, the Lord of the Rings where you, I mean, I know they're sort of split, but I don't know, or Harry Potter. If you haven't seen Harry Potter 1, don't bother with Harry Potter 5. Mm -hmm. Whereas these, you, they kind of are little self-explained stories and they do kind of link into the... so. You could watch Iron Man 3 next and it would make sense for the most part. Mm -hmm. Or you could watch The Avengers next or you could watch 
Captain America next, which came after it. Mm-hmm. Or no, it's Thor that was after Iron Man too. Right. So yes, I think it leads. It ties into the whole narrative, but it also has a, a conclusion of its own. Thing. Yeah. Yes, that is good. Yeah. So I did think it was good to answer your question. So, so where does this place now? I know, I know. Last question. So, where does this place now in the in the in the hierarchy of films? What the Marvel ones? Because it's obviously gone up a couple of notches. So, what is it? What does it beat now? Any of the Hulks or any of the I know you're partial to the Hulk. I do like. Yeah, yeah. I I would say it's on par with the with the Incredible Hulk, which I really like. It's probably a bit better than Captain America. Well, I don't know because it does have its problems, like I said, you know, with the setting things up, and you know, the the, the clearly the Avengers coming up soon scene. Mm-hmm. But I still enjoyed it. So like, so if you if I'm looking at it like, you know, critically, then it's probably quite low down there. But if I'm looking at it just as how much I enjoyed it as me as a person, mm-hmm. then yeah, it's quite high up. But then that might just be because I've seen the others more now, so it was a fresh one that I went in with low expectations. <clears throat> Maybe. So I would say now that I don't feel that there's any chink in the the the, the Marvel armor, at the very least. Well, that's pretty good because I mean, that's generally a hot topic, isn't it? Saying like, oh, they've got weak weak, weak films and stuff like that. But I mean, you, you know, people you can still argue it. that about the Incredible Hulk, but I'd argue that as well. I quite like that film. I know you're quite partial to the Hulk, aren't you? Hulk smash, yeah. I've got. I think you Hulk's. know as a. As a male in his twenties who's British, I have quite a lot of re- repressed inner rage. <laughs> yeah, and I couldn't quite. You know, it's a it's a fancy of mine to suddenly be allowed to smash the fucking. Like <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, good. A little bit of therapy for you <laughs> might be needed, but uh, yeah, good. Okay. Well, I guess we should sign this one off. We should have signed it off six minutes ago, but go on then. Bye, everyone. Have a great Christmas. It's Christmas time. Have a good time. <laughs>